for joining today's educational webinar with Cancer Support Community Los Angeles. I'm Abby Espinoza, the program coordinator at CSCLA, and I'm honored to welcome you to this week's webinar titled 10 Tools to Thriving Through Unwanted Change. Before we begin, if this is your first time joining us, Cancer Support Community Los Angeles is a premier nonprofit organization providing vital social and emotional support to families facing cancer including patients, caregivers, and their loved ones, all at no cost. Our programs include support groups, healthy lifestyle classes, social activities, and educational programs such as this one. If you would like to learn more about our services or watch past webinars, please visit our website at cancersupportla.org. Before I introduce today's speaker, please note that your video and microphone are automatically disabled for this webinar. You may, however, enter your questions into the Q&A feature found at the bottom of the Zoom window at any time. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. We may not be able to get to all your questions today, but we'll get to as many as possible. And to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Alan W. Cheoban is a metaphysician and mind-body coach who helps midlifers create health, joy, and connection. Inspired by Cancer Support Community's mission and her spiritual teacher, Dr. Levery's teachings, she synthesized her signature system called Your, Your Essential Self, Yes, a blueprint to manifest positive and lasting personal transformation. It gives me great pleasure to welcome today's speaker, Dr. Allen. All right, I can go ahead and pull up your slides and let me know whenever you're ready. I'm ready whenever you are. You're running the slides though, right? Yes. Perfect, thank you. All right, well, welcome everyone. I'm so happy that you're here and I'm so, so honored to be here. Um, today, I am sharing with you 10 tools to thrive through unwanted change, but I want to start by asking you a question, and you can, in the Q&A, answer the question with a yes, I imagine will be. So the first question is, how many of you are here because you have experienced an unwanted change in your life that you feel ready to move beyond? So if that is you, type in a yes. Yep, I see lots of yeses coming in, beautiful. Okay, and then a follow-up question. How many of you had, have tried some things to get back to the way things were before the unwanted change, but it's been harder, taking longer than you thought it would? If you can relate to that, go ahead and type in a yes. And yep, I see the yes is rolling in again. And I totally get it. You are definitely not alone in that being the case for you. Because challenge, change is challenging for human beings, all of us. Our brains are generally wired to resist change at all costs. Even when we're super clear that we're unhappy about how things are, and we decide and declare that we want to change and we're ready, it's hard for many of us to do the actual things on a consistent enough basis to create the changes that we want to get us out of unwanted change and change into a more desired situation. So why is that? Simply put, it's your conscious mind, the thinking mind that desires the change, but it's your unconscious mind that does so many of the things that you do all day long. There's a sort of inner battle that's going on, and whichever part of you is stronger wins the battle. And for most humans, the unconscious mind wins and change never happens. Your unconscious mind experiences such a level of comfort in the knowingness of the way things are that it literally will sabotage your efforts to create a shift. Even when you consciously know that the change will make you feel so much better, your unconscious mind resists that change because it takes a lot more energy for the brain to 
try new things and do new things, and also to deal with the simple fear of the unknown that it has. So it's easier for it to stay on autopilot, which it does. Your some subconscious mind would rather stay the same and suffer the known consequences than have to work harder, face fear, and maybe in its thinking, feel better. It'll fight for homeostasis of the things that make you suffer. This is the case whether you're wanting to create a desired change, like get stronger or uh, change a career or move to a new city, or if you're wanting to shift out of a moment or a state of unwanted change, divorce, loss of a loved one, diagnosis of an illness, et cetera. So back when I worked uh, at Cancer Support Community LA, which I worked at before it was even called that and was there for the name change, I was so intrigued with the original mission statement, which said people with cancer who participate in their fight for recovery along with their healthcare team, will improve the quality of their lives and may enhance the possibility of recovery. That last part of the mission statement just interested me so much about, that means that what we think and our attitude and our beliefs may have an actual impact on our body. And this was Hmm, probably 15 years ago now. So it was kind of avant-garde. It was definitely avant-garde thinking of uh, Dr. Benjamin when he created the organization. Um, but it made me so interested to learn about the mind-body connection, which is something that I have steadily consumed um, since then, which has actually helped me heal it, an eating disorder, change my career, become a yoga teacher, a breathwork trainer, a holistic life coach, and receive my doctorate in metaphysical humanistic sciences. And it's helped me to lead hundreds of clients through the process of transformation with my mind, spirit, body methodology that I synthesized while I was working uh, at the cancer support community, funny enough, and I call it your essential self or yes. So I have seen the resistance, the disbelief, and the hopelessness of the challenge of change in living color through myself and my clients over and over again. And I have seen every single one of my clients break through uh, the pattern of resistance and achieve their visions, dreams, and goals thanks to the 10 strategies that I'll share with you today, along with daily practice. Okay, so um, Abigail, if you could scoot forward a few slides. We're on slide four. Perfect. So um, I'm going to share with you my most recent transformation story. Um, I like to say that I was in the perfect storm of grief from having lost my sister my older sister, um, near at the end of uh, COVID, she had a heart attack, uh, went to the hospital for a week, uh, was feeling like she got it, you know, she's good. They released her and she just didn't wake up the next morning. So it was very, very Southern. Um, at the same time I had been, uh, and I still am, and I actually have been for 10 years caregiving for my mom who has a form of a chronic cancer. And we had, spent several uh, 11 and 12 day um, stays at the hospital, November and December. And then my sister passed in January. This was a couple of years ago. And I was also in the midst of like every single menopause symptom that you could think of. I was having it all. Um, my vision during that time of tremendous amount of unwanted change was to get back to how great I felt before all of that unwanted change happened. But the truth is, and I knew this, that we can't really get back there. Like I can't get back to where I was when I was 30 because I was 30 and now I'm almost 60. <laughs> um, we can only move forward. 
But the thing that I realized through my process, and I'll share a little bit about the story so you can uh, understand that I really get the struggle, um, is that where we can go is move forward and we could get to a place that can feel as good or even better oftentimes because we've learned something and expanded and grown through that challenge. Um, so sometimes we get to a place that is somewhere we didn't even imagine was a possibility for us. And that's kind of what happened for me. So I'd like you to just take a moment and close your eyes. And as you connect inwardly with a deep breath in and an exhale, and allow yourself to get clear about what is the unwanted change that is bogging you down or the perhaps handful of them like I had. And even though you're in the midst of this situation, can you imagine that there is a great possibility, a great opportunity that lies ahead for you, that after you break through this current breakdown, that things might take you to a place that you couldn't have accessed before the struggle, that you couldn't have imagined that you could get from where you were and where you are now to where you just might end up before the unwanted change. So once you're done with that little moment of reflection, if you feel like you see a pinhole of light or possibility in the q and I'd love for you to just type in, I see it, or yes, or I know there's something better coming from this, and I am ready to get there. Good. Yes, I love seeing the answers come through. Wonderful. Okay, so... Um, on to slide five, before we get into the details of any of the tools, I want to share all 10 with them with you because I have one hour to present and we're already uh, a good amount into it. And there's just not enough time to actually present in enough detail, 10 tools in a way that you're going to feel like you've impacted from them all. Most likely you'll feel super overwhelmed by it. So what I'm going to do today is highlight the four most important tools um, so that you can really um, have a, a clear sense of what you have to do to truly create the shift. So let's go to the next slide and I'll just quickly speak through what the 10 are so that you have an understanding. So tool number one is to strengthen your brain. Tool number two is to raise your awareness, or I call it consciousness. Tool number three, allow yourself to feel. Tool four, make peace with where you are. Tool five, change your story. Tool six, celebrate with gratitude. And you'll notice that one's not at the very end. It's in the middle of the progression of the tools for good reason. Uh, tool number seven, uh, start to relate to your feelings as guidance rather than as the whole world. <laughs> um, number eight, spend time in nature because it always makes you feel good. It always makes you feel better. And um, that is one of the most important tools as well is to be committed to feeling good and do the things that are going to make you feel good every single day. So spending time in nature is a really big one for me, which is why I included it. Um, tool number nine, nurture yourself with high quality, nutritious food, whole real foods rather than junky comfort food, even though oftentimes when we're in a struggle, that's what we reach for, but it doesn't do us any good. And also nurture yourself with movement. And that doesn't mean that you're running a 10K or taking the classes that you used to take, but perhaps you're taking a walk around the block and just moving a little bit, you know, or 
putting on your favorite song and swaying a little bit side to side. All right, and then tool number 10, prioritize self. And I'm kind of thinking self-care and yourself over other people and prioritize support, which if you're here at the cancer support community, we know at least you're doing that one, which is amazing, wonderful. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And I'm gonna share with you the four that I think are the most important. Um, and they are the first four that I've listed here. And I'm gonna just share with you that um, really, if you did these four, you would be well on your way to your transformation. Uh, the first two tools are scientifically proven as doable, relatively simple, and effective. But don't be fooled. Uh, simple is not always easy. And in this case, it's not easy because doing simple things takes motivation, regular practice, and commitment, all while your unconscious mind is trying to convince you oh, don't bother with any of that. It's not going to work because it doesn't want it to work, right? And then uh, before most of us would be able to really commit to a brain retraining exercise regimen or to consciousness ra raising techniques, we kind of have to get ourselves out of the why me, poor me, or angry at the world me stage of the situation. And that's where allowing yourself to feel and process is very helpful. Um, and that piece along with that we probably will have to on a daily basis, have the practice of making peace with where we are right now um, so that we aren't looking back there, but we're being right here right now, being present. So I'm actually going to discuss tool three and four first and then go back to tools one and two because I actually think that these two have to happen before you're going to have the willingness to expend the extra mental energy that you need to do that other work. So let's go to slide eight and start with tool number three. And this is um, allow yourself to feel. So really, like I want you to think of this as grieving the loss of how it was so that you could get really present with how it is. So most of the process of manifesting change, which I've been coaching people on for a decade and a half, works the same exact way for creating a desired change as it does to thriving through or getting through with grace and unwanted change. And I have tested this out on myself and uh, some of the people who have come and done my coaching work with me were also in the midst of unwanted change, not just, I want to manifest this, but really the process is the same. So many of us have been um, unconsciously taught, as I mentioned earlier, that I was to not really feel our emotions. We've heard things like big boys or girls don't cry suck it up, hold it in, don't show your emotions, they'll think you're weak, you're too sensitive, don't be a baby, don't be a downer, be positive. Uh, and I could go on and on. So maybe you could just think for a moment with yourself, what was the thing that made me feel like I had to hold on to the emotions? Was I raised in an unsafe environment to express myself? Or was I told I was too much? at some point. So some people have rep repressed their emotions for so long that they're actually afraid that if they begin to allow themselves to express now, that those emotions would take over them and they would be stuck or never get out of feeling that. They have a fear that the feeling of sadness would get them stuck in a deep depression, or they worry that expressing their anger would make them become a rageful, hurtful, or dangerously explosive person. And they worry what others will think and that they'll lose friends and loved ones and maybe even their career if they allow themselves to really feel their feelings so that they can be expressed and moved through and out of the body. And um, so the 
the next slide nine, um, the very interesting thing about emotions is that when you actually pay attention to them, when you allow them to be recognized, to be heard, when you allow them to get expressed, the process can actually be far quicker and far less dramatic and scary than you think it would be. Um, there's a belief in the spiritual or new age communities that um, we have to be the light or have a positive mindset and only focus on the good. And in certain, certain circumstances, those are really beautiful messages and goals. And in other circumstances, that would be called spiritual bypassing or emotional repression. And neither is healthy. What I have personally learned, because I tried both ways, <laughs> I did the emotional repression for a long time. And then I got in touch with my feelings. And then I, my spiritual teacher was always saying that we have to focus on being positive. And even though that's part of what I teach in um, my YES course, um, there is this missing step that I think doesn't get talked about all the time. And that is that we absolutely must feel our emotions. We are human. We are feeling beings. And it's natural for us to feel. So even the hard and ugly feelings, when we um, when we spend the time to actually be with them, um, we are letting them come up and be present in the now moment. We're feeling them, we're saying, I hear you, we're listening to them. And then they can dissipate and get lighter and softer and not so big. But when we hold them in and repress them and we don't want to let anyone know we're feeling and we're smiling, even though we're feeling horrible inside, that stuff, the emotions, you can think of emotions as energy in motion. And that energy in motion gets packed in and is no longer in motion and it becomes stagnation in the body, which can be um, not good for our uh, physical health at all, and certainly not good for our emotional and mental health. So, of course, we want to feel, but we want to give ourselves a time frame, understanding that grief, for example, doesn't have a time frame. But we want to just be with it for as long as we need to until we have that first thought of, I'm ready to feel better. And then, of course, you're going to have waves of grief that still come. Sadness, anger might and most likely will still come up. But you want to be really focusing at some point on, I have fully expressed this and now I'm making a conscious choice to focus on something that feels good, right? So one way that we can do this, I wanna give you a quick experience of how to feel an emotion in a way that is quick and effective at allowing it to move through and out of you. So if you could take another moment, just sit up nice and tall, focus on your breath, maybe two, three breath cycles, Close your eyes if that feels safe and comfortable for you. And think of a situation that recently made you angry or sad or frustrated or be in the why me's or why hers or whatever. And just allow yourself a moment to be in the feeling. Allow yourself to notice where in your body is that emotion that you're feeling now? Do you feel it in your throat or in your chest or is it in your fist? Is it in your jaw? What does it feel like? Is it fiery and hot? Is it a uh, poking? Is it just a, a wave like a nausea almost? So where is it within you? What does it really feel like sensation wise? And now allow yourself to kind of drift up into your mind space and ask yourself, are there thoughts that are attached to the feelings? And what are those thoughts? And just become aware of them. Oh, I'm feeling 
uh, this message come through, I am thinking, see, that always happens. You know, whatever it is, notice the thought. And then bring yourself back into the body, being with that emotion, that discomfort, or the physical sensation of it, or even with that thought that it triggered within you. And ask yourself, what are you trying to tell me? Discomfort, pain, anger, sadness. What are you trying to say to me? And just listen to see if you have a, a knowing of what the answer is for you. If you have words that pop in your mind or you have a different feeling or a vision, we all uh, will have this happen differently. And then maybe if you have a pen and paper, take a moment and just jot down what that realization was for you. What is it that the discomfort, the emotion is trying to say to you? And don't judge it. Don't rationalize it. Just jot it down so you remember later. And if there's any other kind of expression that wants to come through, like some tears or you know, you want to pound your fist on your hand or on a pillow, or you just feel like making a loud noise, like whatever it is, let yourself do that. And if you need to take a few more moments to write down any other thoughts, feelings, awarenesses that have come up for you in this little experience. And then I'd like you to bring your awareness back to your breath and just notice for yourself, did the emotion last the whole time we did that exercise or did it dissipate quickly? And you're trying to figure out like, oh, how do I answer all these questions for myself? Because it's already gone. So it's a very powerful, quick little tool. And it's something that you may need to spend some more time with. I do invite you to sit with each different emotion that you think you may have uh, repressed or stuck inside of you. And you'll know these, these often come from the things that we've been uh, traumatized with in life. But um, if you could do uh, an experience like this with yourself, just paying attention, noticing where it is in the body, what it feels like, asking it if there's something it wants to tell you, listening. Um, basically, you are giving the feelings, the emotions, the attention they need. And attention is actually love. So you are loving yourself and your feelings and emotions in a way that makes them go, oh, feel better. I got the love I've been wanting all along. So that's that. Going to the next slide, we're gonna start to understand the concept of make peace with where you are. So let's say once you um, have gotten through or let's say you notice that you're feeling stuck in the emotion still, self-pity, hopelessness, anger, sadness, a little bit of the why me's. Um, the way to change out of that is to change your energy frequency. And the last exercise we did was a way to bring consciousness or awareness or self-love to the situation. But sometimes you're so in the thick of it and so in the depth of the emotion and the situation that it's hard to get to self-love. And so the easiest way to shift out of the heaviness of the emotion that you're in is to simply get to a neutral place. And one of the easiest ways I have found to get neutral energetically is to simply make peace with where you are by recognizing that in this moment, this is simply a new starting place. There's no judgment that is actually attached to where you are. Yes, all those things happened in your past. And yes, some of the things you thought would happen in the future may be different. But really, all there is to do over and over and over again is say, okay, this is where I am. I'm going to make peace with it. This is where the universe has brought me. 
This is where all of my past experiences has brought me and there's something here to learn. Maybe it's just a fresh perspective, a different way to look at the rest of my life and my situation and my body and the way I am with myself and others. Perhaps all of the unwanted change is simply a way of me getting my attention so that I could sit in this present moment and have an understanding that I need to be right here, right now, not back there, not caught in my pattern, but right here, a fresh new starting point to then grow upon. And for me, it took doing that every morning, every afternoon, every evening. I just kept like when I noticed the wave of like anger, frustration, grief, why? You know, all those questions, I just took a deep breath. Okay, sitting in the why any longer isn't going to serve me. I'm just going to say to myself, this is my new starting point. I am making peace with the fact that I am right here. This is not my forever. This is my right now. So let's go to slide 11 and talk about making peace with the now in the now moment that essentially the only place that we can create is from the right now moment, right? This is where I am now. Can provide your mind with just the amount of peacefulness that it needs to have an inspiration of a thought or idea that changes everything. And so that you can then go from this moment of like, oh, I could have sat here in anger and frustration and self-pity for so much longer, but just by stopping and pausing and saying, okay, I surrender. I've been brought here for a reason. I am making peace with where I am right now and understanding it is not my forever. It's just my starting point now. And then watch what happens for you. It's really quite amazing. Um, doing this also on an energy frequency level completely changes the energy of your being. And when I first started teaching this material, when I first started learning about it um, back near the end of my tenure at the wellness community, cancer support community, um, it was all like new, like no one really talked about this stuff or knew about this stuff that, you know, we're energy bodies. And in my metaphysical studies and in my yogic studies, I have really come to a very strong belief that we are energy in our body, but we're also energy around us. And so just that simple act of getting into surrender and feeling a moment of peace and acceptance and allowing for where we are right now can be such a shift in our frequency that we're no longer tuned into the radio frequency of 10 minutes ago, 10 years ago, uh, whatever, but we can tune into a whole new frequency that just takes us on a beautiful journey from an ugly place. So it's amazing. Um, one of the things that is important while you're working with this tool of continually making peace with where you are is not comparing yourself to others. And it's a hard thing for us to do, but it's a very important part of making peace with where you are because you are on your journey. I was on my journey and everyone else in the world is on their journey. And how can we compare to any of each other. Yes, we're all the same in some very serious ways, but we're also very different from each other in our socialization, our upbringing, the things that have happened to us, what we made them mean for ourselves. And so just being in that moment, I'm, I'm making peace with where I am. You're honoring yourself by focusing only on you. And this touches a little bit on um, 
the last tool that I mentioned, which was uh, number 10 of prioritizing yourself, that it helps you to understand that you have all you need within yourself, that your inner teacher is waiting for you to tune into it and ask it for advice instead of trying to do and be what everyone else is doing and being and asking them for advice. And it will guide you on your own very special pathway when you're ready. You are you, they are them. Neither is better or worse, good or bad, just different. So own yourself and respect your pace and have peace with where you are as you have agency over yourself and your experience. All right, let's move to the next slide, please. We're working with tool number one now, strengthen your brain. So I wanna share with you as quickly as I can that um, I have a free beautiful mini course called Your Essential Self, It Starts With Your Brain. And um, it's free and I'm sharing it with you so that you know that it's there and it's free and it's available to you. And at the end, I'll give you information on how you can get access to it. Um, in this little course, it basically says that if your brain's not strong, flexible, and balanced, that you're going to have such a hard time creating change, getting out of an unwanted change situation as well. And so in this free course, um, you take a survey that tells you how fit or out of shape your brain is and what your score in that survey means. and um, I also take you through a beautiful breathing exercise in it. And then you'll know how much brain building activity do I need to get myself back to neutral. And then you can always go back to the course once you access it for free, you have access to it for free forever. And then you can test yourself again in six months, a year, two years, whatever, and notice how much your answers change, which means that your brain has gotten really strong and probably your life will be very different by that point as well. So the brain gets out of shape, so to speak, because the mind is constantly chattering. Um, studies show that humans typically have between 60 and 80,000 thoughts every single day. And research suggests that 95% of that unconscious self-talk um, is unconscious negative repetition that we're like completely unaware is happening. And only about 5% of our conscious thoughts that we're um, have, or the thoughts that we are aware that we're having are conscious and that we're actively engaging with them. So we need to basically be able to shift that from 95.5 to maybe 75, 25, and that would make a tremendous difference in our lives. So quick personal example, when I was in first grade, I overheard my teacher tell my mom that I may have a learning disability because I didn't follow directions well. Sometimes I was like spaced out and not really present and that I always took longer than the other children to complete every single task. And so after hearing that, I created a thought inside myself that I took on as truth, which was, oh, I'm not as smart as other people. I guess I'm, I'm dumb. And in doing the math, when I learned about this mental chatter, mind to body connection, and that we were having this repetition, 40 to uh, 60 to 80,000 thoughts, that means that when I was about 40 years old, I would have repeated I'm not smart enough to myself at least 3 million times. And that terrified me at that moment. And I decided um, that it was time to take control of the chatter. Um, slide 13, please. So when you take into account something that you may or may not have heard of called neuroplasticity, um, it's very exciting and very helpful. This means that we have the ability and our brain has the capability of changing and growing. And as a matter of fact, our brains are actually doing that all the time. That is actually how the brain gets out of balance is that 
3 million times, I told myself I'm not as smart as other people. And even though a year later I moved to California, they test every child and I tested gifted, but I didn't replace the thought of I'm not as smart as other people to, wow, I'm gifted. No, I kept going with the other one. And so when we get stuck in a negative mental pattern like that, that unconscious chatter, um, we are basically helping what happens in our brain, these electrical currents cause synapses, or which are unions between different neural pathways. The ones that get um, regularly fired, activated, become strong, and therefore become habitual, meaning they become unconscious. So I said it a few times consciously as a kid, and then it became an unconscious thing. We have the power to do that on purpose right now. And that's what I did to heal myself of my eating disorder. I changed a myriad of the unconscious thoughts I was telling myself. And every single day I started to say um, new things to myself instead of I'm not smart, I'm not fat, I'm not good enough. I started to say, I'm brilliant. I'm my body is perfect. I am breaking the pattern of obesity for my family. I'm not only good enough, I am amazing. I am worthy, right? I made little songs out of it. And we have the power to do this and we need to do this so that we could make our positive input get strong and then eventually become our habitual thoughts. So a little bit more about the metaphysics of this is that um, words, Paramansa Yogananda refers to words as vibration bombs meaning that whether it's the words that you say quietly inside yourself, the self-talk or the words that you say out loud have a powerful impact on our consciousness and our surroundings. Like a bomb creates a significant explosion. Our words create waves of energy that affect ourselves and those around us, period. It is a truth. Um, this concept makes us realize the importance of choosing our words wisely because they carry a positive charge energy or a negative energy with them. So I want you to take a moment. We're going to try an affirmation. So think of like one thought that you sense or have an actual awareness now that you've been repeating to yourself that has been building your brain in the way it's built it up till now. And I want you to take that statement and write it in the exact opposite. So for me, instead of I'm not smart enough or I'm not as smart as other people, I would write, I am gifted, right? I am smarter than most people, whatever it is. And I want you to start to say that to yourself Every morning, every time you're driving, every time you're, it's a commercial on TV, if you watch something that has commercials, every time you're cooking dinner, every time you're getting ready for bed, take every moment that you have to work on rebuilding your brain, strengthening new neural pathways and letting the old ones wither and get so small that they end up feeling like they're gone and they may not be gone completely, but we can certainly shift what our unconscious mind is working on. It takes practice. And this is a lot of what my uh, 12 session course, Your Essential Self, A Transformation is all about. We take full advantage of neuroplasticity and I'll share info about that with you at the end. So the next slide, we're going to get on to tool number two, raise your consciousness or awareness. Um, consciousness is simply self-awareness and not self-awareness. Like we actually have a word called self-consciousness, not like we're self-conscious, like, oh, what are they thinking? Self-awareness. Oh, I'm aware of what's happening in my mind. I'm aware of, wow, look at those words I just said when someone said, how are you? I just filled out all my past instead of my 
I've made peace with where I am moment statement or my affirmation that I am repeating every possible moment. So you have to have enough self-awareness to recognize your own habitual patterns, uh, the ones that you've created in your own mind and that you say out loud all the time in order to have any chance of changing your situation. Building consciousness begins with creating the space, the calmness and the quiet within to notice your continuous self-talk, your habitual replies and the stories that you tell outwardly all the time. So metaphysics tells us that to raise your consciousness, um, it's recommended to practice controlling your breath because in the ancient tradition of yoga or pranayama, the breath is known as the king of the mind. So much of the yoga practice is about using these challenging postures or movements with your breath as an anchor so that you can be with the breath enough to stay present in this challenge. And it's so interesting that, um, yeah, we in the West have turned traditional yoga into fitness. And actually, that's why I'm so excited and grateful and so blessed, I feel, to be sharing the practices of Nam yoga with you, because we really focus on the breath with movement as a secondary thing. And we use the breath and our self-awareness of our physical being, our energy, body, our emotional and our mental states to really practice this consciousness raising. Uh, my teacher always says, if you can be aware of your thoughts, you are essentially enlightened. That is what enlightenment is. It's consciousness. So modern science has recognized through studies that the practice of mindful breathing is more effective than the practice of mindfulness, which is very effective, or the practice of meditation, which is also very effective alone. So combining mindfulness with breathing, paces, patterns, um, can cause so much presence for yourself and also creates this lovely side effect of a heightened sense of well-being. So the next slide, please. Mindfulness is simply paying attention to what you're doing at the moment that you're doing it. And meditation is focusing on one thing or no thing to quiet the mind. So one thing at a time, which is really all our brain is able to do. So when we're multitasking, we're actually going this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, and our brain's brain is going blah. So breath work is controlling the length, the pace, the pattern, and or the rhythm of your breathing, which you can only do when you're paying attention to the breath, because we breathe all the time unconsciously. So to change our natural breathing takes consciousness. It takes self-awareness. And that means that you're practicing mindfulness and you're strengthening your brain. So breathing is one of the most powerful tools. And while you can't control your breath all the time, um, while you are doing it, it's working on you on so many levels. Um, so in my classes on Tuesdays at 10 a.m., uh, breathe, move, meditate. We do lots of different breath practices. And I wanna share one with you right now that's super simple. It's a inhale through the nose. We're gonna do it together. And then you're gonna exhale nose with a sound like a buzzing bee. And we're gonna do three rounds of it. So just go ahead and let's take the right hand, place it on the chest and the left hand, just bring it onto your low belly. And take a deep breath in through your nose. And then hum. Mm -hmm. Keep going as long as you can. And then two more times. In nose, slow, deep breath. 
and make a long humming sound. Mm -hmm. Keep going. The humming is creating a vibration in the brain. So it's kind of like waking up the brain, the mind space. Uh, a longer exhale is triggering the nervous system to relax into the parasympathetic side. Last one. Mm. It's a way to focus on just the one thing of the sound as it leaves or the exhale as it leaves and then just breathe naturally and notice any sensation of vibration you might still feel in your body in your head notice if you feel a little bit relaxed you might have yawned by now beautiful so it is recommended next slide please to practice mindful breathing several times throughout your day every single day for the best results and I would love for you to join me for Breathe, Move, Meditate. It's a hybrid class um, from 10 to 11. It's on Tuesdays. It's so funny how it looks different there than it does on my computer. Um, we could go to the next slide, 17. Um, I just want to share with you, there are some different ways that we can continue to work together. And then we'll open up for quick questions if we have any. Um, my Tuesday class, as I mentioned, on uh, July 26th, uh, I believe it's a Friday from 12 to 1 p.m. I'll be teaching a class in person at uh, Tower, and that is going to be um, something you can sign up through through Cancer Support Community Los Angeles as well. So I'd love to see you in person there if you can. Um, and then I have the online course and the uh my lifestyle coaching program. If we could go to the next slide, um, the best way to get access to those is to email me at my new um, cancer support community email address, which is a c i o b a n at cancer support la dot org, and you can ask any questions. We can make a schedule to talk together and see. Um, you know, first of all, I could super easily just get you in with the free course, but if you're interested in working together a little bit more deeply, um, and having some extra support in addition to the beautiful support you get at cancer support community, I am here for you. So I'm going to open it up to questions and answers. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Allen, for your amazing presentation. I know we all learned and enjoyed it a lot. Um, it looks like we may have received one question. Um, there's a few comments, but I believe that is it. We also have reached the end of our time. Um, so I would like to thank you again, Dr. Allen. We really enjoyed this presentation. We I know we all learned a lot. Um, and then we just have a quick closing slide. Um, Kathy will share that right now, um, just to give a little bit more info about Cancer Support Los Angeles. Um, so if you, we do have two classes, like Dr. Allen mentioned, she facilitates our hybrid breathe, me move and meditate class that's on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Um, you can either join virtually or you're more than welcome to come to Cancer Support Community's office. Um, we also have an in-person sound bath meditation on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Um, if you're new to CSCLA, you can go ahead and scan that QR code right there. And if you are already a member, you can just um, scan the other QR code that says register here, um, and it'll take you to our calendar. And if you'd like to learn more about Cancer Support Community Los Angeles, please visit our website at Cancer Support LA. Dot org. And if you have any questions about anything um, about this presentation or how to get started, please email us at info at cancersupportla.org. And once again, I want to thank you, Dr. Allen. We really appreciate you taking the time to share all of your knowledge. Um, I know we all really appreciate it. And thank you to our members who joined us today. And we hope to see you at our next one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.